it almost felt like you were in a bit of a movie. It was sort of that cliche of this big disaster hits, you wake up Christmas morning, and now the first thing you have to do is start coordinating a response. The main focus of Niagara Region Emergency Management is to protect those who live, work, and play in Niagara Region, and to help mitigate, prevent, respond, and recover from large-scale disasters. This role really is about how do you coordinate and communicate between large different groups. Being a region located between two lakes, we're very susceptible to lake effect via snow. We also have flooding. We of course see uh, large transport arteries going through Niagara. We have some of the largest highways and railroads leading to the United States. So transportation issues, hazardous materials are always something we look out for. Calling it a storm was not doing it justice. Uh, it was 36 hours of 100 km hour plus winds. We had over 24 hours of pure whiteout conditions. We had people stuck in vehicles on the roadways for over 20 hours. So it was you know, beyond any blizzard or storm I've ever seen before. At the Niagara region, we have the regional government and then 12 municipalities underneath that. So there is a large amount of agencies and groups we have to coordinate between. And trying to do that during the holidays when you have widespread power outages is very a uh, daunting task to say the least. Christmas morning, we decided that we needed to activate and that was one of our first major use cases of the ad hoc system to notify both our internal emergency operations center and our community emergency response team to respond to the disaster. So I was part of the response in the Christmas blizzard. I was alerted on our phone, the, the alert went out, and then it was just a matter of selecting the choice and, and responding to say, yes, I'm able to, to help and this is my time frame, and this is my information. So one of the nice things with ad hoc is you're able to have pre-canned alerts already made ready to go. It was simply logging in, clicking two buttons, and then the alert went out to our entire team. So we were very easily able to track how many responders were available, who was coming, and then build out our plan from there. It definitely makes my life easier as a volunteer because you're given choices. Can I help in the morning? Can I help in the afternoon? Can I help tomorrow? And it breaks it down for you so that you're able to uh, respond accordingly and easily. We use ad hoc specifically in emergency management for disaster activations, but we also have different divisions across the organization using it in their own ways. So our security and customer service team uses ad hoc to relay any pertinent security alerts to staff. Our corporate communications team is currently working on deploying ad hoc for facility closures. You can be extremely complex in the back end. You can set up all kinds of conditions and where you want alerts to go. But when it comes down to actually sending alerts, it's very, very simple. So the thing I really enjoy about using ad hoc is that it really maximizes the efficiency in trying to notify other people. Prior to using ad hoc, there was a mix of other systems that were in use and it really led to both being a more expensive proposition having multiple systems, but also the sharing of knowledge. I think overall we've seen ad hoc, especially in our most recent use cases, be a system that was very, very beneficial to us. The responses from people who we were helping during that Christmas blizzard was just overwhelming in the support uh, and the appreciation. I really want people to understand that there is a very dedicated, both professional and volunteer group of people working around the clock to keep people in Niagara safe and to make sure we're prepared should a disaster strike.